not scared. I've got a healthy concern, you know. I'm not so old that I have a death wish, but I'm not going to back away from trying to do it. With the record being 155, what I have to do is beat 155. But what I want to do is to hit 170 miles an hour. That means that I have at a minimum not only broken the record for a street electric car, I've also potentially broken the legendary record for that body of Mustang ever. That puts you in the world, of, at least in, in your own mind, as a record holder. Make no bones about it. This was a gamble and is a gamble. I hate to say this reference because there's, in business so many people make jokes about if you build it, they will come. In this kind of a case, you gotta prove it and they will come. I had always tinkered on anything with a motor like lawnmowers and mini bikes when I was a little bitty kid. I just grew up in an environment where if you weren't rich and spoiled, you basically had to work on your own cars and learn to use tools. And I just always loved, you know, fixing things and making things work and go faster. Trying to outrun my friends down the backside of the river, you know. There were some kids whose dads were professional mechanics that had a little bit of an edge on some of us. But frankly, I tried to make up for it by being a little bit crazier than the other guys. So I'd hold the pedal down a little bit longer before we got to the hard curve at the end and stand on the brakes a little bit more. So it just, it was just seeped into my whole childhood, you know. I didn't have much of a choice, <laughs> I mean, I was just surrounded by it. I had a vision and a passion, and sometimes that just doesn't make sense. Sometimes it's not always the easiest path to walk, sometimes it's not the most affordable path or the easiest way to make money. How do you explain something when it gets in your head and it won't get out of your head, and it has to be done? I'm watching a company like Tesla cause a disruption in the automotive industry. I see a niche market in that disruption that appeals to everything in my whole life, and I've been blessed enough to have a shot at bootstrapping to get going at it. Man, that's it. That's the American dream in a nutshell, and that's what we've got going on here. This is the bloodshed, which is the birthplace of the Zombie 222. That's the first high-performance EV converted supercar muscle car that we've been working on. The zombie coming down ready to hunt its prey. It eats the brains of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Maseratis, anything that sounds like a pasta dish from Italy. All right. This car is the most exciting thing I've ever driven in my life. We have 1.2 megawatts potential out of our battery pack. That could give us 1,500 horsepower if we dialed it in right and had the motors and the drivetrain that could handle it. It is literally like crack cocaine. This car does zero to 60 in 2.4 seconds. It's right there with the Bugatti. The only thing that's quicker right now is the Porsche 918 Spider. I mean, that's, that's insane. And I'm doing it in a 68 full-bodied, full-interior, all-glass Mustang. Come on. When I step on that pedal, instantly, each motor is fed over 2,000 amps at 185 to 200 volts of power. So that's over 4,000 amps of energy at like 380 volts hitting that drivetrain instantaneously. With the electric car, everything is immediate. The highest torque is at zero RPMs, and so you get that immediate thrust back into the seat. It's an experience that, until you feel it, you really don't uh, understand it. I believe there's a disruption. I believe there's a niche market wide open. I want to name it and claim it. I started researching high-performance electric, and that's when I stumbled across a car called the White Zombie. The more I started looking into that car, the more fascinated I got with the fact that this was something done to a 72 Datsun. The power and the numbers and performance that car was putting out were just, they were almost unimaginable. And so I wrote uh, John Whalen an email and outlined this whole vision for vintage muscle cars. It was gonna be this beautiful marriage of sick electric performance, beautiful, iconic cars, vintage cars. It was the, it was the dream, you know? That ultimately led to John throwing the white zombie on a trailer, took a road trip to Austin, and uh, he got real excited about what we were doing with the car. We just had to get that car up and running. We got it ready, got it running. Took it to San Antonio drag track, John punched it. The car jerked the front wheels a foot in the air. 
the fans and the audience were just freaked out because no one even understood this was an electric car. And that was like in, I guess, November. You ready? Yep. It's gonna shake you a little bit. Okay, now. go ahead. <laughs> so, given that what I'm doing is a little bit controversial, you know, some people don't like the idea of taking a muscle car, a vintage muscle car, and desecrating it uh, by converting it to electric. But, you know, here in Austin, yeah, you know, keep it weird. Anything's fair game. It's famous, man. I'm from out of town. And this guy uh, at a construction site says, you know, hey man, sometimes uh, this car here comes by on Fridays and it's all electric. And I just happen to see it, I'm like, there it is. It's getting to be quite a celebrity around town. The zombie. The motor is all electric. Really? That is amazing. And some of the guys in the club probably get sick of hearing me. It's not even a race. 3,000 amps, zero to 62.4 seconds. Battery cost $35,000. At car shows, I end up doing this over and over and over for hours on end, which I love it. I mean, I love it because it's all about marketing, right? Make no bones about it. This was a gamble and is a gamble. My wife's been very patient. You know, she hasn't hounded me saying, where's your orders, where's your orders? I keep telling her I'm not worrying about orders right now. I'm not even focused on orders right now. I'm focused on proving this car is insane. This technology is not cheap and the cars are not cheap. So by necessity, I knew that I had limited the section of the market to the guys that go to the big auctions and write checks for six figure deals. I wanted the guy that likes that guilty pleasure of having the car that nobody else has. And frankly, Teslas aren't rare anymore. I was reading about the Texas Mile. It's kind of new to me. This will be the first time I've ever done it. It is a one mile strip where it's private property, uh, so there's no speed limit. And twice a year, they open it for registration where you can bring your car of any kind down there. You don't race other people, you race your own top speed. So it's all about setting top speeds. When I found out somebody else had uh, gone to this event with an all electric car and tried to see how fast it could go, I had to go. I mean, I had to. With the record being 155, what I have to do is beat 155. But what I want to do is to hit 170 miles an hour. I wouldn't be lying to you if I didn't tell you that was part of the 170 magic number, right? I like that legend that, there, that the 67 Mustang once kissed 170 miles an hour at the hands of the legendary Carroll Shelby. And so uh, that's a good goal to shoot for. To get to that goal and that number, we have a lot of work ahead of us. And if we're going to focus on building a brand, you know, we got to really prove it. Is it horrible? Like I'm not gonna like it. No, it's pretty bad. It's not as irritating as a vacuum pump. There goes the uh... silent but deadly. Yeah, yeah. Just keep saying, just for the mile. I have moments where I think about it and I get all excited like a kid at Christmas. You know, I'm gonna see cars that you only see in magazines. Cars that run over 250, 60, 70 miles an hour on gas. I'm not really, uh, I'm not. If the one thing that worries me is the aerodynamics of the car. That's, I'm, I'm worried that that could stop us from getting to our goal. Since you guys were here last, we have lowered this car at least this much. That makes all the world a difference. The lower you get it, the closer to the ground, the better off you are, right? I'm not a big wing lover in general for just for looks and aesthetics, but what we'll do is we'll get high pressure above it and low pressure below it, which causes it to push down as opposed to if you turn it over, you'll be like an airplane, you get lift. So we're getting reverse lift, pushing the car down. The problem is wind resistance. When you hit that wind, it has to go somewhere over, under, through. And so the wing helps with the back, the chin spoiler, the lowering of the car, the changing the tires, all that helps a lot with the front. We're gonna pop the back of the hood and let air out of the engine bay area. That'll also help a lot. 
Um, and that's what we're doing. I mean, I'm not living in a bubble of, of idealism to think that a 1968 Fastback Mustang was ever intended to go well over 120 miles an hour. I'm not going to go out there and do everything I've got and go for it the first run and get killed trying to do that. I'm going to work my way up until every time I feel unsafe, then I'm going to come back and change something. I know this team. I know what it's capable of. I know what the power systems are capable of. And I know it can be done. And we will do it. The Texas Mile is a pretty rare event. It's a two mile runway and you get to go as fast as you can. As fast as you can go, period. No rules in one mile. Excited, man, excited. We've done everything we needed to do this morning. We installed a new drive shaft at six o'clock in the morning. As you can see, I've gone over the car and taped seams, things that might catch air under them and blow hard. And so now I think it's time to go get in line. Mm. Be careful. Oh, let me take a seat. If something happened and you have to remarry, uglier than me. Uglier than me. Yeah, minuscule a tenth of a second is. So how do you feel about the 170 mark? It's gonna be tough. I don't, I'm gonna keep making changes and see. I just don't know, but I've still got what's left. I'm at 185 volts. I will go to 200. I might even, because my car number is 222, I might even take it to 222 volts. It's just motors, but I couldn't be any happier with the performance of the batteries, the motors, the controllers, the cooling systems working. Man, it's all coming together. See, I need 15 more miles an hour. I gotta squeeze out 15 miles an hour. Let me get busy. Oh, dude, it performed wonderfully. As soon as I got off of it, I knew, I knew that it was gonna be a better run. It felt stronger from the second I pushed the pedal. I just need to squeeze out four more and then all the naysayers. I'll be saying a prayer. Well, Lord, I don't ask for much. I only ask for four, four little miles an hour. Shelby would be proud, man. He would, he would. All right. Awesome. All right, dudes, come on, man. Give it to me, baby. <laughs> All I can say is yes. Oh, man. Damn, it feels good, man. Awesome. awesome. Where's my wife? Don't I get a hug? I'm not hugging him. <laughs> I think she's videoing you. 
all courage. It's nothing to do with tech, tech support, engineering, project management. None of that. It's just my courage. It's a whole thing. I'm actually just shocked. I mean, I can't even believe I'm holding this ticket, man. I mean, if this doesn't sell the vision of ultra high performance vintage cars that are all electric, what will? If this isn't the ultimate muscle in a muscle car, what is? This is awesome. This is electric. This is the future. I felt like a kid again. I mean, right now, I'm 50, coming on 54 years old, and if I tell you, if you didn't see my body, you'd swear to God you were talking Mitch Meffert, 17 years old, with his Impala Super Sport racing on the back side of the river against anybody and everybody that would put up or shut up. I'm telling you, this is awesome. Everybody should do something like this in their lives. It makes you young again.